All right, so now let's actually run Perfview on, uh, on our sample application called Memleak. As I mentioned earlier, we have the two different kind of features, collecting events and then working on, uh, on heap memory, right? And the way that you access these features are up in the menus here. So the collect menu, you can uh, run the collect or you can select the collect menu item and that will take you to uh, options for collecting events. But then you also have the memory menu, which says, well, take a heap snapshot of a live process, again, while it's still running. Or if you prefer, you can take a heap, snap, heap uh, snapshot from a dump. Right? So those are the two different ways. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go and run our tool or our, our application called Memleak. We saw that already earlier in the module. It slowly but continuously um, is using more and more memory. So I'll fire that off, let it run for just a little bit, see what memory is like. This is again task manager. Memleak, yep, we can see that the commit size is slowly but surely creeping up. Okay, back to Perfume. I want to start by collecting some events. So I'll go to the collect menu, select the collect menu item. That brings up a dialog. For the most part, all the defaults are fine. You don't really have to worry about it. Um, if you want to change the name of the data file, you could, but I'll keep it as perfewdata.etl. It goes into my C colon wag zoned folder. Um, circular buffer, so it keeps 500 megs of data before it discards it and starts over again. Um, and then, of course, you have the start collection. So I'll click start collection and I'll let this run. And you can see how it's actually working down here. I'll let it run for a little bit. All right, well, that should be good enough. And I'll click stop collection. And it does collect quite a bit of data. So um, it can take a little bit of time. Uh, okay, so that seems to be done. I'll click cancel. And now we've collected a whole bunch of events. We don't know what yet, but we collected some events. The file that I told it to collect to is perfviewdata.etl, and we can see that in our left-hand uh, pane here. If you double-click that, it is going to open that file for you. Again, these files can can be quite large depending on how long you ran it, so it might take a little bit of time for it to, to crack it open. Um, but here we go. It opens up some different child nodes underneath this file, depending on what it found in the actual trace file. So we got things like trace info, the processes, events, call stacks, and something down here called GC stats, this garbage collection statistics, just-in-time compiler statistics, now, one thing I want to point out here, the collection of events occurs on a machine-wide basis, okay? And so that's kind of why you see a tab called processes here. But we know it's a .NET app. We know that it's got some memory problems. So um, GC stats might be interesting, garbage collection, right? I'll double click that and it opens up a new window with all the garbage collection statistics. I'm not gonna walk through all of these I'll just kind of show you um, a brief introduction. There is the GC stats summary. It tells you things like uh, the command line, the runtime version, CLR startup flags, how many total allocations, et cetera, et cetera. We scroll down and the first table here shows you GC rollup by generation. So the first column here called generation tells you <laughs> For each of these generations of 0, 1, and 2, how many garbage collections occurred? So we can see in Gen 1, we have 1, and Gen 2, we have 1 as well. Now we all know that Gen 2 collections is not the greatest thing because the objects stick around for a long time. Um, and then if you kind of scroll down further down below, you see more and more information about, about the GC itself. Okay, So that's the intro introductory node for looking at a high level overview of what the GC is doing. If it's working really hard, you can kind of get more information about it there. Another kind of cool thing is that it's got this, this thing called GC heap alloc stacks. 
And what that tells you is what are the allocation stacks what, for what went on the managed heap. So double click that. And uh, here you see the example of the fact that events are fired for all the processes. So what we got to do is find our process. It was called memleak, which is right there. And you can double click it. it. Takes you to kind of a summary view. This tells you things that have gone on to the managed heap. Uh, more specifically, the name of it. Here, there is a, an entity called large object. And what that means is that objects that have gone onto the large object heap, um, that is objects greater than 85,000 bytes. And we can see that 70% of all the objects on the managed heap are due to large uh, object allocations. Right, so that's an area of concern here. We don't necessarily like to put too much stuff on the large object heap because he's got some side effects that can cause problems. A total of 18 megabytes of these large objects have been allocated across 125 instances. Okay, this is the first thing that I will focus on because again, 70% of all consumption is large object heap, not a good thing. If I double click on that, it will tell me, give you a drill down. And it tells me that the large object heap is rooted by certain elements in the code, if you will. And we can see here that that's our memleak process. And of course, the process doesn't execute code. We all know that threads within the process do. So we've got a thread here. There's some other frame we don't really care about, NTDLL. And then finally, it looks to be in our memleak.program.main function. That seems to be what's causing all of these large object heap allocations. So now we've gotten somewhere. Perfview has essentially told us this is the biggest hitter. And here are the frames that you should be interested in. And more specifically, it's our main method in our, in our application. So we could now turn to code review. We could go to the main method and see if we can spot something. But if it was more complicated than that and the code was really, really big, nothing really was obvious in as far as leaking memory, well, maybe we can get even more help from Perfview. So let's, uh, let's give that a shot. Actually, going to close out Perfview and uh, open up another command window so we can run it again. So I'll run Perfview. This time, I'm not going to collect events. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Perfview to take a heap snapshot. Maybe if it can analyze the heap for us, it can let us know what those 70% really, you know, what they constitute. So I'll click that. Again, you want to specify the application you're interested in or the process you're interested in. So I'll do memleak. And uh, it took the, the heap dump and it presented us with the results. Here it's telling us that the big hitter on the heap is due to a static variable um, declared in memleak.program.alist and that is the one that's occupying 100% or 704 megabytes at this point because again keep in mind I want to reiterate this everything Perfview does here the process keeps running and running and running well now the code review becomes easy right I know that it's got something called a list so I can simply go to my so let me uh, stop the leaky app because it's occupying a little bit too much memory at this point. I can go back to Visual Studio. Here's my application. It's got some code in it. And really, I could just search for, do I have something called a list in here? And it looks like I do. And there's a static member called a list. So I'll double click that. And what we see here, in fact, is that we have a list 
of byte arrays. And if I look at my main function, I can see that really all I'm doing is I'm allocating new byte arrays and stuffing it into a static variable. And this is actually a very common cause for high memory consumption because of the fact that a static's lifetime is you know, long running, it stays available until the process exits. The more memory that consumes, it will never be collected. And what this app is doing is just continuously adding new byte arrays to that list. So that's an example of how you can use Perfu by simply attaching to a process with low overhead. Process keeps running, it's brilliant. Keeps running so you have no service interruptions. The tool itself, no one's gonna have too much to say about how it's deployed because it's X copy deployable. So it's a beautiful tool, presents a lot of different information. Um, and it's really great for, for getting to root cause in lockdown environments. <laughs>